Hey everybody, Aaron here from Countryside Acres. Thought I'd do an update on our hot water system. So as we've shown before in the uh, previous video, which is quite old and has gotten a lot of uh, a lot of views on it, also a lot of questions. This is our wood stove area, our primary source of heat in our home. Uh, all winter long, it's basically always hot. So there's been a lot of changes since the last video. I'm going to do another house tour here, so that's coming up. If you're interested at all, we will be taking video of the entire house. On the back of the wood stove, what we've built is this copper pipe and I've coiled it around. You've seen that in a past video. If you haven't, take a look uh, and how I did that. But basically it's just a flexible copper pipe and I wrapped it around this in tight coils. So the concept, the way that works, let me move that out of the way, is because the heat's coming out of here, it's leaving anyway. It's not robbing any heat from my house. The reason I call this free heat is because this chimney's hot anyway and it's going up and it leaves. It goes out the house. And by wrapping this coil around here, I'm just absorbing some of that heat that's lost up the chimney. So this is a little cooler. People have asked, do we have creosote issues? No, none. I've never noticed any creosote issues because of this. Okay, so the water on its own, because hot, you know, heat rises, the water gets hot in these coils and naturally gravitates up. Okay, and then it pulls it or pushes it, however you want to word it, up this pipe and out. We attach this in here just so I can drain it if need be. Uh, it's not really necessary. And this one here just so I can shut the loop off if I needed to work on it. I had to do some uh, some plumbing upstairs, so that's why the taps are in there. That's not necessarily part of the system. So as this rises, the hot water gets pushed up. It automatically pulls cold water back in through the bottom loop. And then that heats up and goes. And it just becomes a continual cycle, never ending. Water coming in the bottom, going out the top. If I feel this guy, this is very warm. This guy, this is cold. And you can easily touch that. And this here, that's that's pretty warm right now. Now, uh, Anissa is also in the tub right now, so she's used a lot of hot water. So obviously there's less hot water in the tank. That's why I can touch this right now. It's still pretty hot though. Ordinarily, if nobody's using hot water, I would not be able to touch this pipe. Even holding close to the pipe, would already be extremely warm and this one here you would be comfortably able to touch right now this one actually feels cold and that's just because a lot of hot water has been consumed other than that there's nothing here and so a lot of people say well this isn't free right this is a, it's a misleading system it's not actually free because I had to buy the wood stove and I have to buy the firewood or I have to chop the firewood and that costs uh, time and resources in order to do to me that's a ridiculous claim it's still free Right? I have to heat my home anyway, and it costs me nothing extra. There's no extra wood being burnt in order to heat my hot water. It's being done strictly by the wood stove and the excess heat from the wood stove. If you were to put a longer coil on here or, uh, or put a, a small circulating pump in here, you could probably increase the return rate. As it is, uh, we can easily, you know, if we don't go bang, bang right in a row, uh, you know, we can easily all shower in a day. Uh, under normal circumstances, I only have a 40 gallon tank upstairs right now, and that's a problem that I would like to address. A larger hot water tank would give me more capacity, which would also allow for more usage. But we do all of our, you know, we can shower with it, we can take tubs with it, we can do all of our dishes with it. Basically, all of our needs are met by this simple system. I'll take you upstairs, I'll show you the rest of it. Essentially that's all that's down here is the coil around the chimney and then the two pipes to go up through the floor and the water heater sitting up above. So I'll take you up there now and we'll take a look at that. Okay. Hey everybody, I was just gonna break into the middle of that video a minute and just let you all know, I, if you go to our channel page, the YouTube channel page and click on videos, you'll get a big long list of all the videos that have ever been done. So if you're new to the channel and you're interested in anything else, all of our house build videos are on there as well. Uh, I am planning on putting together a, a video of our house being built very quickly. I'm hoping to add that soon. But if you want to go back and you can see what we've built here, what we have here, uh, if you're interested, you can find that all in there. There's also playlists available there. 
uh, of that and also other things as well if you're interested in our family or want to learn some more about what we've been doing here maybe some other projects we've got on the farm you can find that all there okay, here we're upstairs pardon the uh this is used as a sewing room here now so pardon the mess so those two pipes come up through the floor as does our water supply in and out okay so this one here is the hot water coming up from the top of that coil and going in to the tank there's a pressure relief system on here a lot of people have mentioned that I'll back up a little a lot of people have mentioned you know oh yeah it's gonna blow blah 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 this has now been successfully running for over two years okay and it has not blown it has not uh, caused any issue of any kind this is a 40 gallon water heater it's just an oil fired water heater it was uh, we've got that blocked off this is where the oil fired part would have went in okay and so the bottom third of this is a fire pot it's empty there's no water in it the top two thirds is full of water and that's why I'd like to get rid of it we got this one for I forget it was somebody was getting rid of it so that's why we ended up with it um, you could use any water heater I would prefer to go with a 60 gallon and it doesn't matter if it's oil fired or electric it's just that the oil fired has a fire pot in the bottom where it actually would have a fire going and we don't need that it just takes up space so I would probably look for a 60 gallon uh, electric water heater would work better the top here as well this is where the exhaust would have come out for the oil fired which of course we're not using if I take this out there's a lot of hot air coming out so I just keep it plugged the top of the water heater excuse the messy plumbing this will all be addressed eventually but um, a little close this is your normal domestic hot water and cold water so this is cold water coming in from my well that's all changed now that video that uh, we originally did we were hauling water from the creek we are now on well water so this is cold water coming from the well same as in everyone's house on a hot water heater this is hot water coming out of the tank same as everyone's house on their hot water heater that is exactly identical to everyone's house okay it's just what's heating the water is different and what we're using is that coil so this bottom one is the cold it comes down it goes down to the bottom of the coil it heats up and then it rises up here and dumps into the hot water heater all right and this is a fail safe in case too much pressure gets built up hot water of course expands and if there's too much pressure inside this tank this will blow now ideally i wouldn't want it blowing right here okay and we would probably plumb this out to outside but i'm not 100 percent sure that we're going to leave this tank here yet just because it takes up you know space in the corner of this room as you can see again pardon the mess my wife's working on some projects here right now so um, it takes up space and I, I wouldn't mind having this somewhere else but that would then require a circulation pump so as I said downstairs you could add that into the system and that would enable you to move this anywhere currently we're running simply on thermal siphon the fact that that water in the coil heats up it rises it comes in here uh, that allows it to just work circular all on its own we don't have to do anything we have no pumps running there's no hydro running to this no solar nothing it just does it all on its own and we have hot water okay the domestic side of the hot water yes of course there's a pump there it's just our well pump same as in your house whether you're on town water or you're out in the country and you have your own well water you have a pump that keeps your lines pressurized right but that is separate from this this loops all on its own and this is fed by your well and pushed out by your well and this goes to your taps to do dishes or take a shower so hopefully that explains it fairly good uh, one other reason that we stuck it here this is the south side of our farm and we have a porch roof here okay and so what i would like to do or what we have planned to do is make a solar hot water rack outside here and that can then very easily be plumbed into here because of course in the summertime we don't typically run a wood stove there are some cold mornings where we will and if we want to have showers and stuff then we'll fire up the wood stove uh, you know an hour or so later we can start taking showers but if we had uh, and also for dishes dishes we would need it as well so we just boil water for dishes instead in the summer but if we build our solar hot water racks here on this porch roof with the sun coming from the south it'll warm that all up and the same thing would apply it would be able to circulate kind of zoomed in here would be able to circulate from those into this tank in the same principle as it currently does with the water jacket down below 
Okay, I hope that kind of explains the system a little better. I hope I've addressed and answered a lot of the questions that people did have on our first video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're not part of this YouTube family, uh, we'd love to have you. Hit that subscribe button and share this video with others. Uh, and even if you don't uh, want to subscribe to the channel, even consider sharing it. There's a lot of other people that are going off-grid or considering doing a cabin thing or, or, or something similar to what we're doing, and this could be very beneficial to them. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Give her a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. If there's any more questions, I can uh, always address them in the comments or maybe in a future video. All right, God bless you all, and we'll catch you in the next one.